the name of Jesus Christ. Sons get inheritance. One with God in majority. In this church, we will prosper by the word. We have the promises of God. Our plans and purposes will always be checked against the world. It is a privilege that we are able to cry out. You can't sleep during the time of war. You have started in your life. Men hands, we will lay hands, but you will get up. It says, arise and shine. And God is going to use you for giving praise. Hallelujah to Jesus. The new has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us in this place. And then we'll be out of here. Amen. It's a good year. It's a good year. We're in a good place. Amen. So the title of the, today's message is, Have Faith in the Word. Have Faith in the Word. As you're reading the Word, your faith in the Word will start growing. Do you understand? And when you have faith in the Word, you will believe that the Word of God can do what the Word says. Do you understand? We're going to see many miracles, signs, and wonders by the Word. Many people in this church will prosper by the Word. You'll be healed by the word. You'll be enlarged by the word. You'll be strengthened by the word. You'll be set apart by the word. When it's difficult in the world, you'll be making progress by the word in Jesus' name. That's why we have to know the word. Do you understand? Your Christian work will be a failed project without the word. I've said it. So we're going to prosper by the word. And when people see you, they will see the highest expression of what a mighty God can do in a man's life, in a mere man's life. Your, your testimonies will become unbelievable. People must doubt your testimony. Do you understand? People must say, is it true? I remember when this church started, we will share testimonies and people will not believe. That's how it should be. They should look at you and say, liar, say it again. Say it again. And as they're saying, you say, listen, I'm telling you that the Lord did it, but I can show you how. Many times we don't know how. You know what? The easiest way to know the Lord is to read the word of God. It's the surest way. So everybody's running around and looking for God, and God is right there. A lot of people say, I don't know God's will for my life. What does his word say? And I feel that as a church, God is calling us into the place of manifestation. And in this church, we don't cook up miracles. All right? And it's also not a church of gymnastics. No. There's no ab abracadabra. No. The word of God is more than enough. We don't need to do any other thing. We just need to study the word. And I'm praying for us as a church that each one will become a word carrier in the name of Jesus Christ. Because what you carry, you're going to manifest. When you read the word, you will see that you can pray more. And you pray the word of God back to him. And there's something about the word of God. It can never return to God void. I want you to say I'm a student of the word. Declare it with boldness. Let me tell you something. If I were to say, get up and say, this year you're going to buy a Range Rover. A Range Rover that will soon become the old model. You know that. And that you can't take out of this. Oh, yeah, Range Rover. No. It's the word. And if God has decided to give you a Range Rover, it will come out of the word. You will not need to steal or kill, let me tell you. And you will not need to kill and you will not need to be on the wrong side of God because everything is loaded in the word. But there are more things than cars and houses in the word. Therein lies your health. And let me tell you, this is not a church where you just look onto the pastor. The pastor is looking onto Jesus. And she's saying, follow me as I follow Jesus. And what the pastor knows to deal with is the word. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if we're all going to become like Jesus, we need to focus on Jesus. And somebody says, but I don't think I hear him. Get a Bible. 
Stop running after prophets. I'm not saying there are no real prophets. You know we like prophetic, the prophetic in this church. But I'm saying, listen, don't let the enemy cheat you out of your great destiny because you cannot open the pages of the written word of God and see the promises that are screaming out, yes and amen. Every time you open the pages of the Bible, you find something saying, I am here and I want to manifest in your life. The promises of God, the written promises of God, the promises of God that are accessible, the promises of God that are available, the promises of God that you can read in black and white, they are yes and amen. This year, we're taking off the cloak of weakness, the cloak of compromise, the cloak of stagnation. We're taking off all those things that have troubled us for so long and we're putting on the word of God, the everlasting word, the word that cannot be broken, the ones that run swiftly, the word that's like fire. What are you putting on? The latest fashion is the word. <laughs> Do you understand? Don't be found naked without the word. We can wear all these things. They mean nothing. They don't speak on the day of adversity. If the word does not sustain your frame, you can't put anything on. So the word carries the sustaining power. So we are going to have faith in that which is eternal, in that which is everlasting. We are going to have faith in the word that has worked before, the word that keeps working, do you understand? And the word that you find, the word that you hear in this church, the word that you believe will be established in your home, do you understand? You will not be put to shame. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when they come near you and they say, what's going on? You say, no, we are prospering by the word. And let me tell you, the Bible says, don't be fooled by the simplicity of the gospel. Don't be fooled by the fact that we can call one another and say, sit, let's read the word. You don't need to go into any dark place where they will put fumes on your eyes and tell you to do degrading things before you manifest. In fact, you will not manifest where you go there. And I'm hearing the Lord saying, the new has come. But in this church, we believe that when God speaks, we act. Faith without works is deader than dead. Do you get what I'm saying? You say, I don't have a Bible. You are going to get one by faith this week. Do you understand? You are going to get one. If you don't have a Bible, you must get a Bible. There's nothing else that we can offer you in this church. You have to read the Bible. As you don't eat with my mouth, you can't just live on the word that I know. You have to know for yourself. And the scripture says, know this for yourself. This we have searched out. But you also need to know these things. When the enemy comes in like a flood, you need to know what to say back. Let me tell you, there will be challenges this year. Let me tell you that. And there will be storms, but they don't need to be seen in your life because you are preparing yourself. So in fact, when people say, have you had challenges? You say, maybe they came and I didn't see them. Do you understand what I'm saying? We cannot be crisis Christians. We are Christ-like Christians. <laughs> Do you understand? Huh? I have practiced both. And I know that one is bad, man. If a crisis Christian that you want to rise up on the day of battle and then declare and learn warfare on the battlefront, the enemy is going to flow you. But if you're a Christ-like Christian, ready for the day of battle, even some some say, don't go near them. There's no point. I see people's home. Being guarded by the word of God. Eh? I see your careers blossoming by the word. Eh? I see our children rising up eh? and taking their place by the word. The Bible says they shall be the head and not the tail. The Bible says we will not bring forth for trouble. And the gods that have not created them cannot have them. 
It doesn't matter the evil ideology there. When you fill your home with the word and you fill your children with the word, no evil will come near them. You know why? The Bible says no weapon from the fashion against you shall prosper. Are you still with me? Are you glad you came to church? Huh? Are you glad? Are you glad you came to church? Are you glad you're born again? Don't let people be feeling sorry to you because you're a Christian. Huh? You're also feeling sorry for yourself because you're a Christian. Uh, if I were not a Christian, I would be. What nonsense would you have been doing? Uh -uh. Because I'm a Christian, I do. Because I, I'm a Christian, I manifest. The Bible says, his word is like a hammer. His word is like a fire. And a hammer that breaks the rock of most stubborn resistance into pieces. Shatter them. Shatter. When you know the word, even when sickness comes, you will sit back and smile and say, you've come to the wrong place. Because you know that when you release one word, you shatter it. Your romance in poverty. That's your latest girlfriend. And you're saying, God, I don't know what you're doing. God is saying, I also don't know what you're doing. Uh-huh. Why do you have a romantic relationship with poverty? Why are you saying it's difficult in the world when it's not difficult in the world? Why are you embracing the report of the, word, of the world when the word of God says something else? Have you not heard eh, that it may be happening to everybody around you won't come near you? When last did you talk to God and God said, I haven't blessed you because I've been broke? If you can find it, in, find it in his word, please come and show me that now I see the reason for my poverty. God is currently broke. Our ignorance is the reason why we are broke and broken by the world. If you say God has decided not to heal you, show me in the word. Are you, have you seen the things we are nursing because we don't know the word? We nurse depression today. Then we nurse anger tomorrow. Then we nurse infidelity day after. When you are saturated with the word. Do you understand? When, 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 the, when you are so saturated that nothing else can happen in your system or in your life. Just the word. And you know, don't say, my husband is always reading the, the scriptures, so we are covered. No. And nobody say, my wife, she doesn't even do anything else. She's loaded. There's an advantage that can come from that. But there are many losses too that can happen when we all don't put our, all our hands on deck. It is time for everyone to read Know and manifest the word of God. And there's time. Okay? Because the word you don't know cannot work in your life. And you cannot, you cannot have faith in the word if you don't know the word. Okay? In fact, you know what we're going to do? When we read, we'll get a notebook and write the word. You'll get post-it and put the word and stick it all over your house. You are saying even this house will respond to the word of God. Let me tell you who we are. We are believers. We are not beggars. What does the Bible say? He daily gives us what? Huh? Daily bread. He gives us our daily bread. And he daily loads us with benefits. Now you will not need to beg for bread. If you don't know the word, you will beg for the bread of health. You will beg for the bread of wisdom. You will beg for the bread of advancement. You will just be begging. No. I'm so excited because I can see what you guys will become. And I know that strongholds are being broken right now. And I know that you're going to manifest God. And I know that there's glory in your future. And I know that the beauty of the Lord will be revealed through you. Matthew 4 verse 4. Do you know I haven't touched my message? It's all good. 
Matthew 4 verse 4 says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Huh? Our lives are too precious to be reduced to bread and butter, pap and meat, jollof rice and chicken. Huh? No, you were not redeemed by bread and butter. Huh? It can be, you know, life can be about food all the time. It says, man must not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word. Every word that has been written for you. And written for you. And when the Bible talks about the word of God, some people say, okay, why must I have faith in the word? Let me say it to you again. God and his word are one. Please give me John 1 to 5. John chapter 1, 1 to 5. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Classic. It says, in the beginning, stay with me, before all time was the word, Christ. Do you get it? So when I say have faith in the word, what am I saying? Only two people got it. Three. When I say have faith in the word, what am I really saying? Thank you, five people. God bless you. Hallelujah. In the beginning, before all time, was the word Christ. And the word was with God. And the word was God himself. <laughs> you know, I just saw that there will be breakthroughs this year. You know, even as you're sitting in your house reading, things will jump out at you and say, this is mine. I've shared it before when we were dead. So I was reading the Bible. And the Lord said, I'll clear the iniquity of this land in one day. The iniquity of this land in one day. I said, Lord, how would you do that? And I started meditating on that because, you know, it was too much for me to fathom. And while I was still doing that, God said to me, I'll clear your debts in one day. Oh, it was so easy for me to believe that. That's the word for someone, you're coming out of debt. And when you come out of debt, eh? The surest way not to go back into debt is to know the word of God. Because some people come out by an act of miracle. They go back in by an act of stupidity. Do you get what I'm saying? And that's on our portion. The word is able to make us wise. The word will make us wise. You'll be dancing because the word is playing a different music in your ears. Eh? Yesterday was my birthday. I danced so much. Eh? After I just fell asleep. <laughs> Even after I turned off the music, my children walked with my husband, they met me dancing. They couldn't hear, but I could hear, man. <laughs> I could hear the sound of joy. When you start loading yourself with the word, even in the word is music, let me tell you. It says it will surround you with songs of deliverance. Isn't that what the word of God says? So when the enemy is roaring, you're hearing the sound of deliverance. And you can follow it and say, I know what God is saying. I'm no longer in bondage. The Bible says, in the beginning, before all time, was the word Christ. And the word was with God, and the word was God himself. He was present originally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him. And without him was not even one thing made that has come into being. Eh? Not one thing. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines on in the darkness, for the darkness has never overpowered it. It has never been able to put it out or absorb it. It has never been able to appropriate it and is unreceptive to it. it the light shines on in the darkness. Yes, it is true that the world is in a dark age, but you need to shine on in the darkness. Our children cannot be captured by the darkness of this age. Your destiny cannot be messed up by the darkness of this age because you carry the light that shines on in the darkness. Do you get it? Huh? And no darkness has the power to extinguish the light of the world. The light, and let me now tell you something about the light. This light is Jesus, right? Uh, it says in the beginning was the word, yes, before all time, 
and the word was God. The word was Christ, right? And this light is who? Christ. And who? Us. The Bible says you are the light of the world. Am I talking to Christians? Are you coming to church for the first time? Should I make an altar call? The light is us. Say I'm the light. Do you understand? Say I'm going to illuminate myself by the word. Don't worry. In a few weeks, you'll be jumping like me. Don't worry. Hmm? Because you are going to sit with the word. One day you are going to read something. You are going to jump up in your room. Hey, I found it. I found it. There are some times when I'm reading the word. I get off my chair and say, yes, I found this one. That's the power of the word. And when you find it, you don't let it go until it becomes your reality. And you know, there's so many things that we need to know. When you read the Bible, you see how God has prepared everything for us so that we can see and become. So that we can see and become. Don't just come to church so that they will say, I'm a Christian. Don't let the highest expression of your Christianity be speaking in tongues. No. Let it be that when you speak in tongues, you do damage <clears throat> to the camp of the enemy and you set yourself free. Don't just do damage, ascend. Come out of prison. The enemy eh, is not folding his arms to say, okay, if that's how much they want to pray, I just, I, I just want to afflict them. Uh, he's saying if that's how much they want to pray and that's how much they know, then I will afflict them night and day. We hit some troubled waters this year. Different families just go through different things. And I'm connected to them. And so we spoke to ourselves. We said, listen, God are the days of saying, see what Satan is doing and then nothing after that. See what Satan is doing. We're going after him. How? By the word. <laughs> you understand? We have situations that we're speaking the word of God over now. And things are beginning to change because the word cannot return to God void. Because the word is Christ. So, as you read the word, I need you to know that the word truly becomes flesh. The word truly becomes your reality. When this church started, we had only the word. Believe me, nobody had money for anything. We just had the word. Pastor Maj, you remember when you met us? The word. The word has started working, man. But when we started, it was just the word. My children are here today and they remember. They will remember that at a point in their home, their fridge had nothing but the word. You guys remember? We began to speak to that fridge. We said, you need to fulfill your destiny. The Lord says, we'll be taking out the old to make room for the new. And we spoke it until it became the reality of that fridge. But then we do know that the Lord locked it into a covenant. So every refrigerator that comes in our, into our home just does the same. And I'm hearing testimonies from my children that even where they live, that's what's happening to their fridges because it has become a covenant. What are you going to turn into a covenant this year? How are you going to sit back and say, we don't have food, we don't have this because we live in South Africa and there are people in South Africa who have food? Who told you that your anointing is geographical? Huh? Who told you when the Bible says God sits upon the circles of the earth? And all the inhabitants are like grasshoppers. When the Bible tells us that it's the God of the whole world, eh? I need you to make a fresh resolve to say, I'm going to prosper this year by the word. I'm going to live in health by the word. I am the light. I will not live in darkness. I love you too. <laughs> John 1 verse 14 says, And the word Christ became flesh, human incarnate, and tabernacled 
fixed his tents of flesh and lived a while among us. And we actually saw his glory, his honor, his majesty, such glory as an only begotten son receives from his father, full of grace, favor, loving kindness, and truth. Those key words are the things that will be seen in your life as you go after the word. Do you understand? You will call those things which be not as though they were, and then they will be. Eh? <laughs> eh? When you release the word, the Lord God Almighty will back it up. Do you understand? He said you will decree a thing, and it will be established for you, right? God said, let there be light. We didn't see all the workings and everything that went on behind the scenes, but we saw light. Okay? I don't know how God did it that food came to our house. Stop saying nasty things about your life. You know, this morning I was praying. I said, Lord, I break down every stronghold of the enemy. And I attacked certain things. And I said, Lord, reverse my careless words. The effect of my careless words. Do you understand? Lord, can you please reverse them for me? Because God does that for us too. But now, if I'm going to reverse those words, life does not allow a vacuum. I must release the right words. And how forcible are the right words? You must tell yourself this week, if you find yourself in front of the TV and you haven't read your word, say they've told us in our church that the word comes before TV. I've got a friend. She put herself... Uh, under an oath by herself. She said, baby, I told myself, if I don't read four chapters a day, then I won't feed my stomach. So if I only read at 7 p.m., that's when I eat. And I've bound myself just to four chapters. I read more than that sometimes, but at least four chapters before I feed this flesh. Bound yourself to an oath. You find yourself just sitting on the phone, Instagram, Facebook, and all those things. And that one that has become X. That was soon, you know. And you find yourself scrolling. Tell yourself, I've been told that the word, the word of God must take priority over all these things. The word of God, I'm telling you, you will find that you've got time for the word. We needed to go for an appointment on Thursday. And um, ideally, you should go early in the morning for this kind of appointment. But when I, I, I woke up on that Thursday, I just felt like worshiping. And I wasn't worshiping. The Lord took me in to worship. So I wasn't going to break that through anything. And when I finished, I needed to read my Bible. So I went and I read my Bible. And we eventually left the house at past 11. And on the way, my son checked online and said, Mom, they're closing in six minutes. And so we said, let's still get there. Like, to cut the long story short, we went to an embassy. We got this was done in like 20 minutes. Uh, what we should go back for, for the next day, we got it that same day. I'm telling you, God is too real. If you make a covenant to say, Lord, I'm not going to step out without your word. It will make everything answer to you. His name is God. So we're going to read the word. Now, some of you will have questions and say, okay, the Old Testament really doesn't sound relevant. Now, the Bible is made up of the Old Testament and the New Testament. What we need to understand is that the Old Testament uh, tells us the story of creation and the story of a God who was relating to a particular people or groups of people in a particular way a long time ago. Do you get it? The Old Testament is the history of God relating to people groups in a particular way. Do you understand? And then God trying to come, to, to, to come close to people as a father and bringing a nation close to himself, the nation of Israel. And I believe that God's intention was to make Israel a flagship nation huh? so that other nations will copy them and come under the canopy of God's love. But because of the rebellion that had been sown in the heart of man in the garden, God could not achieve that without bringing Jesus in the New Testament. 
So the Old Testament is relevant so that you understand how it all started. Okay? But you are not to copy the traditions and the cultures of the Old Testament. Because you are not living in the Far East. Okay? And even those ones living in the Far East now, a lot of those things have changed. But now, the revelations, the promises, and the instructions of the Old Testament are still very valid. Do you get it? Do you understand what I'm saying? So when you read the Old Testament, don't say, but I don't get it. Because there are so many things there. When Jesus came, many times he would say, you have heard them say, but now I say to you, do you understand? Because when they learned the Old Testament, they carried it like that and they would say, if you're caught in adultery, you must be stoned to death. They could not see the grace of God. They could not see that as many as were not caught were not stoned to death. They could not journey with God into a place of grace. So when Jesus came, Jesus came, the, um, Jesus came and brought the dispensation of grace. And grace does not mean that we sin. Grace means that we live above sin. That's why the Bible says, shall we continue in sin and expect grace to abound? He says, certainly not. Because as you sit with the word, the stronghold of sin is shattered. Do you get it? So now when you want to see how to live your life, you focus on the revelations, the instructions, the promises of the old and the new Testament. And at the point that the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, Jesus came to show us how a man must truly live, a man loaded with the word. Do you get it? And you know, the enemy knows that as soon as you start reading the word, things will begin to change. So what he does, and he does it vigorously and relentlessly, is to keep you away from the word. So you can hear the opinions of men. In fact, some people will sit online, and it's not wrong to listen to messages, because there you will find revelation too. Because some people would have worked on it, and then you hear. But that must not be your only source. You must still read your Bible. Get the word in. Be creative when you don't feel like reading. Play it in the car. Sleep with the word on. The enemy will say, how much of it would you hear? As much as you can hear. And you know the rebellion that started, started when the enemy came and said, as God said. He's still saying the same thing. You will find it in the Bible that God says, you will lend unto nations and you will not borrow. Satan will say, how can you live without borrowing? Everybody's borrowing. There are people who do not borrow. It is written in the word, right? That no evil will befall you. The enemy will say, good, bad things happen to good people. Where have you found that in the word? And you're almost quoting it. And you're saying it is in the book of imagination, chapter 5, verse 1. Because that's where it is. So when you don't know the word, the best you can be, eh? the best you can be is a glorious counterfeit of who God has created you to be. A seemingly glorious counterfeit, actually. You'll be like that counterfeit rand that people will keep spending until somebody's caught. So you will look like the real thing until the day you need to manifest the word. Say, I'm going to read the word. I'm going to manifest the word. So we are going to engage with the word of God differently. Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light to my path. I've just read the NLT. 
Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light to my path. His word guides our feet and lights up our path, dispelling darkness as we travel along the path of life. You know, that's why the Bible says the light shines on in the darkness. It's not that darkness won't try to come. It's just that darkness cannot overcome the light of the word. Darkness cannot suppress the light of the word. Darkness cannot comprehend or curtail the power of the word of God. Darkness cannot harass or disqualify or defeat the light of the word of God. Now, everything that darkness cannot do to the word, darkness cannot do to you when you carry the word. I like your amen. Amen. <laughs> Huh? We are going to enjoy being Christians, okay? We are. I tell you. You will look at your problems. You will open the Bible and say, Lord, speak to me about this issue. And something that looks so big will now start shrinking and shrinking and shrinking as your word is rising on the inside. Darkness is being dispelled, you understand? You are increasing in strength. And then you wake up one morning and say, go in Jesus' name. And that will be the end of the affliction. You need to speak back to the enemy. And we're going to speak back this year in Jesus' name. So God has given us his word as an anchor. His word is our solid foundation. The word of God is your strong tower. It is our safety net and it is our vantage point. Do you understand? We're not fighting to win. We're fighting because we have won. But you need to understand that. Don't just say it as a cliché. She said, I'm fighting because I've won and you're not winning anything. The Bible said you're more than conquerors because you know what? The enemy will try to defeat you. And you cannot defeat the word of God. So we cannot be defeated. Amen. So a Christian that does not know the word of God can never be all that God wants him to be. And he can never do all that the Lord has assigned for him to do. You cannot be your very best without the word. No. You'll be a shadow. Or of who God has created you to be. You'll be a very impressive counterfeit of God's intended version of you. All right? So we're going to approach the word of God with a hunger to see. The psalmist says, open my eyes that I may see what? Wondrous things in your law. Now, when I continue to see wondrous things, I become a wonder things, I become a wonder. We're going to become a wonder to our world. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm going to have to stop here today so that we can pray. I've said God a lot. I'll read a few scriptures to you quickly. So the Bible tells me, I've read it earlier on, I'll read it again. It says, <clears throat> in, in um, Romans 12, 1 to 2, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's the word of God that is able to renew your mind. That is the tool for renewal, the word of God. And then 1 Peter 2, 1 to 2 says, therefore, 1 Peter 2, 1 to 2 says, therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. As newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Babies don't grow without adequate nourishment. You cannot grow without the word of God. You cannot have faith in the word if you don't know the word. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. And you know now when we read the word, it is no longer veiled. You know why? We carry the Holy Spirit. If you don't pray in tongues, get hands laid on you later to be okay. So when you approach the word, you're approaching the word from a place of understanding. And the Holy Ghost will now begin to expand the scriptures to you. The more you look into the word, the more you become like him. The Bible says... In 2 Corinthians 3, 16 to 18, it says, 
and I, and I want to read it from the Amplified. It says, but whenever a person turns in repentance to the Lord, the veil is stripped off and taken away. Now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, emancipation from bondage and freedom. It's time for total freedom, okay? It says, and all of us, as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are constantly being transfigured into his own very, into his very own image, in ever-increasing splendor, and from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. We continue uh, to behold in the word of God, as in a mirror. You look into the word, and you become more and more like Jesus Christ. That's where you get up and say, if Jesus can't be sick, then I'm not going to be sick. Mm -hmm. You say, if Jesus doesn't fornicate, I will not fornicate. Don't tempt me here. Do you understand? Things that Jesus will not defile his body with, I will not touch them. And we begin to break free from affliction. You look at Johannesburg, you say, Lord, give me this land and let me prosper in this land. Do you understand? You say, let me prosper in everything. Give me souls and give me the abundance of your wealth. It is not wrong. Are you ready to read the word? I'm excited. I hope you are. So we're going to desire the pure milk of the word. It doesn't matter how healthy a baby is. If the baby is not nursed, the baby will die. So don't say, I'm a Christian. I haven't read the word for two years, and nothing has gone wrong. The time, the, the, the time of ignorance is over. It's time to read. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, study. To show yourself approved unto God. A workman. You know why he calls you a workman? The word of God is a tool in your hand. Do you understand? A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. 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 John, 15, John 14 verse 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. How are you going to keep the commandments that you don't know? How are you going to know if you don't read? How would you know that God says don't slander if you don't open your Bible? And you will slander everybody. And say, uh -huh, things are not moving forward. Satan says, I've got something in you that belongs to me. So I'll take things that belong to you too. Everything is, as, is an exchange. Many young people don't know that their bodies are precious. So the enemy presses you. Huh? Say, no, it's time to start having sex. The sex that defiles. He pushes to have, for people to have as much sex as possible outside of marriage. And then when they get married, they, they can't do anything. Then that becomes a problem. Keep yourself by the power of the word. All right? And they say there are no virgins out there. There are virgins out there. Many of them. Many. Saying because of the word of God, I'm going to keep this temple pure. And the word helps them to stand pure. That's what we're going to see in Springs of Mercy. That's what we're going to begin to see in the body of Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, because your light will shine. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 14, 21 to 23 says, He who has my commandments. So the first thing is, keep my commandments, right? But then you need to have them. And he says, He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me, please listen here, will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Do you understand it? And when God does that, we will also manifest Christ. It says greater works you will do. Greater works. Why? Because as you take the word, you see that, wow, where Jesus stopped, we can continue. And I ask you to rise up on your feet, and we're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, Jesus is good. Huh? You will not need to run around. The word will work for you. 
Jesus was going to go to the centurion's house. The man said, I'm a man under authority. I understand the power of words. And he says, Jesus, listen, you don't even need to come. Only send the word and my servants will be healed. Do you get it? You are going to send the word and things will change. Students, as you go back to school, you send the word over your academics. Those of you who are working, you send the word into your career. Okay? You send the word into your office. You send your word, the word into, over your bosses. You say they will favor me. Do you understand? They will look at me and say the glory of the Lord. I will not be despised. I will not be disgraced in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> they will say they are retrenching people. You say for me, not a day more, not a day less in this place. According to the word of the Lord. Let it be unto me according to your word. So we have only one prayer before I get down. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. So Proverbs 4, 20 to 22 says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. And do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. And health to all their flesh. The word of God is quick and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Jeremiah says, your words were, f were found, and I ate them. And they became the rejoicing of my soul, because I'm called by your name. He says, I watch over my word to perform it. If our God is standing like this, say, is there anybody declaring the word? He's looking for you to open your mouth. And declare the word. He says, I'm watching over my word. Isaiah 55, 10 to 11. It says, for as the snow comes down. Please give that to me. I just want to read it before we pray. Isaiah 55, 10 to 11. It says, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven. And do not return there, but water the earth. And make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it, it, it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So when the centurion said, send your word, my servant will be healed. Jesus said, be it unto you according to your faith. The servant got healed because the word was sent. How many times have you watched the rain coming down, and then you've seen it going up again? When it starts raining, we say the grass will be green. Isn't that what we say? Huh? We're expecting everything to be lush and green. We're expecting the fruit trees to begin to bring forth fruit. And then we're expecting them to be sweetened by the rain. So when you release the word, it cannot return to you. Boy. I want us to pray. And say, Lord, I will give attention to your words. I will incline my ear to your sayings. I will refuse for them to depart from my eyes. I will keep them in the midst of my heart. Do you understand? You'll be word loaded and word saturated. Do you understand? In fact, every pore on your body will be oozing out the word. If anything touches you, the word will manifest. Do you understand? Can I get you to pray for yourself? Begin to pray. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Father, we bring ourselves, oh God. We pray for a hunger for your word. And we declare, oh God, that we'll submit ourselves to your word. Jesus.